Hello and welcome back to the channel. It's a lit life with Mandy Reads and today I am beyond excited to do this unboxing for you. This is going to be the Once Upon a Book Club Bridgerton box and I've been waiting for it for ages and I just, ah, when I came in today, I literally screamed. I'm so excited. As we look at what's inside this box, the very first thing we have is the pamphlet. There's a bookmark, there's a book print, and so on. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Once Upon a Book Club, this is a book box company that has a, I would say, a rather unique approach to how they do book boxes. Every item that comes in a book box is based off of something that happens in the book. So this is just something that I really love about this company, it's just how connected the items are to what you're reading. And if you are interested in subscribing for yourself, I do have a discount code, it is Miranda Reads 10 Now the Bridgerton is a really long series, eight books, and the first three come in this book box and each one of those has gifts associated with it. The Bridgertons themselves are a family of nine that were pretty well-to-do in the Regency era. There's Violet, the mother, and then she has eight children and they are named alphabetically. So Anthony is oldest, Benedict is the second, Colin is the third, Daphne is the fourth, etc. Each book in this series follows one of the siblings, not necessarily in the order they were born, but as they find a love, and you also get to see the stories from the other siblings play out in the background as well. So this is a series that I am currently on the eighth and final book of, and I would say it's pretty up and down for me. I did really, really enjoy the first three, four-ish books, but after that it kind of like fizzled a bit for me. That being said, when I saw that Once Upon a Book Club was doing a book box on them, like I hit buy so dang fast, especially when I saw these gorgeous covers. Because I have already read this series, I'm not going to reread it and open the gifts when prompted by the book box company. I will just be going through it and giving context behind the gifts and my thoughts on that as well. So if you haven't read these, I will try not to give away major spoilers, but I also don't know what these gifts are yet, so we're just going to see what happens. Alright, so let's get started. So the very first item that came in this book box is not actually associated with a specific book. It's actually a challenge. Now the challenge is to wear these gloves that come in this little mesh bag and to try and recreate the photograph on the card. Now as I'm trying on these gloves, like low key, I love them. There are nowhere near enough occasions in society for me to be able to wear these gloves, but like on a whole, they're gorgeous. Very well made, like I don't see the lace coming up anywhere. I like how it's lined so it'll last longer. And I don't know, they're just, it's fun. I really want to know, whose idea was it to take gloves like this out of style? Because I am digging it, <laughs> seriously. Okay, so moving on to the very first book. The Duke and I, and this one focuses on Daphne. Daphne is the fourth oldest and the first girl of the Bridgerton family. Now Daphne is coming out in society and she is... I would say pretty excited to be able to go to the parties and potentially meet a husband. The only problem is is that everyone sees her as like the Bridgerton sister or a friend and no one sees her as a romantic potential partner. So she's not having a lot of luck for her very first time out. And we also follow Simon. Simon is the Duke of Hastings and he has come back into society after he's been away for a while. He wants to finish up some business. He wants to visit some friends. And unfortunately, all of the mamas of society see him as the perfect catch for their unwed daughters. For reasons that I believe unsaid, Simon does not want to get married. He's made a vow that he will never get married. He will never have children. And at the same time, poor Daphne is desperate to get married. She's desperate to have children, but no one is showing any interest. The two of them bump in together and they come up with a plan of sorts. If Simon feigns interest in Daphne, then that'll show all of the suitors that she is highly desirable and it will protect him from all of the mamas because it's almost like he's been spoken for. So their plan goes into action. Now, as we are coming across our first gift on page 120, Simon is doing his best to 
play the role of a devoted suitor. Now in this era, one way that men would show that they're interested in a woman is to call upon her the day after a party, normally bringing gifts or something to try and woo her. Simon does this and what he brings is flowers, but for Violet, aka Daphne's mother. And this is one of those moments where you realize that Simon is a very good character at his core. And this is how it is shown. The item itself, I would say these are silicone tulips. They've got that like soft feel and that stretchiness that silicone things normally do. And I am like low-key blown away. I love the way these look. I love the detail on the petals. And even like when you pull the petals aside and you look out in the center, there's a is it stamen? It might be stamen. It's it's a, the, the little pollen-y things that the bees like. One thing I like about this is that it's not an obvious item. Like if I was reading this book, I wouldn't think to go and grab a bouquet of flowers and include it in a book box. So it got me by surprise a little bit. Now as we keep going through this book, we have a lot of back and forth, a lot of cat and mouse, a lot of flirting, but not totally flirting. And eventually, something happens. And it is so scandalous that Simon and Daphne are forced to wed. And that brings us upon our second gift. Now this is on page 244. And as we open up the item, we can see that it is a ring. Specifically, the ring that Simon gives Daphne as their engagement slash wedding ring. I think this one looks really pretty. The only thing is, is that for me is that it's a little bit of a small ring, so like it's a pinky finger ring rather than something that would go on the ring finger. But then again, I've always been told that I have rather large hands, so <laughs> it might be fit better on other people. So as the book continues, there are a few scandals. So overall, I feel like this book works really well. Now the very last item is a connection to Lady Whistledown. Now, with Lady Whistledown Society papers are a, like, I don't know if it's a daily or if it's a weekly, but essentially it's a gossip column where Lady Whistledown takes uh, jabs at pompous idiots or she critiques um, dresses of the, ooh, the snobby and the insincere. And throughout the entire book and most of the series, we have little quotes from Lady Whistledown as she talks about this or that and we get to see the characters interacting and we get to see them overreacting to it as well. So this last gift comes on page 402 and if we open it, we see a calligraphy set. Now this one, like, okay, so I, I liked the flowers, but like I should have saved my low key blown away for this calligraphy set. So this comes with a pen, and on the pen's feather is printed a Lady Whistledown message. We have a ink bottle with Lady Whistledown on it, and we have uh, five different nibs for the pen. So this is like, like what? <laughs> I don't know, like I, I don't even know how to interact with this, because like this is just so beyond what I'm expecting. Now if we look at the actual quality of the items, granted I am not like an expert in calligraphy, I do appreciate how everything feels very solid. I feel like with some book boxes you can open items, you're like, eh, well this is very very thin or very light. This stuff feels solid and I actually look forward to trying to write my own letters with this. So this is a really fun connection to the series as a whole. Now that we finish the first book, we get to move on to The Viscount Who Loved Me. Now this one focuses on Anthony. Anthony is the eldest of the Bridgerton siblings. He has had the burden of running their estate and as a Viscount he has to take care of his family and then the people who depend on him. So he has a very high stress job and he along with Simon and actually now that I think about it like every single guy in this book are a little bit of a rake. And rake in this society just means like kind of like rakish where you're flirty, you might um, kiss or do a little bit more with multiple girls. Ironically, if a girl ever even so much as tries that, she has to get married off, otherwise her reputation is ruined, but that's not here nor there. Anyway, the focus of this is Anthony, and Anthony has decided to retire from his rakish ways and he decides that he needs to find a wife 
preferably one that is tolerable. Now, as we know from the previous book, Violet is determined that all of her children have true love. And she's a little disappointed in this, but like Anthony is really sure of his path, so he enters into society. This year, the most desirable girl is Edwina. She is beautiful, gorgeous, and absolutely stunning. Anthony decides, you know what, why not, and he starts to pursue her. There is only one problem, her sister Kate. Now Kate is the older sister, she's still beautiful, just not as beautiful as her younger sister. And the two of them are, I, I want to say step-siblings or half-siblings, I cannot remember which. Anyway, Anthony knows right away that in order to win over Edwina, he has to first win over her sister. And that brings us to page 140 and our very first item. So in here, we have Kate talking to Anthony, and she is saying that she knows what kind of person he is, and it's a little bit of a false assumption, but a little bit based on fact, and there's absolutely no way that he would ever be allowed to marry her sister. And as she is saying this big speech, she drops her key, and that is actually the first item. We have this large ornate key with a little lacy ribbon on it. This does kind of remind me of the keys that came with the October book box, but like, I'm also kind of okay with it because it fits pretty well with the actual book. As the book progresses, Kate and Anthony circle, they dance, they have quips that they exchange, etc. And eventually they kind of realize that they would fit pretty well as a couple and Anthony proposes and from there we come upon item number two which is on page 279 so for this one we are having a little bit of tea time between Kate and Anthony and she starts to pour themselves a cup as they discuss what their marriage will be like and unfortunately for Kate uh, Anthony is looking at this way more from a business perspective than a love perspective like she was leaning towards dun 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 so looking at this item, I really like it. So we have a teacup here, and it's got all kinds of gorgeous little designs on the center, and we have like a little bit of a gold handle and accents, and then a quote on the front as well. So then we keep going through this book, and I quite liked watching the relationship develop between Anthony and Kate. I mean, there is some like, uh, I guess, era-appropriate sexism and treatment of women, but at the same time, I feel like them as a couple work really well. So then we have on page 342, the very last item, and as we open it, it is tea. <laughs> so in the actual book, the two of them start having tea together again, and they start to discuss Edwina and her potential husband, and then I guess the item that connects to it is the tea, obviously. So thoughts on the tea? Um, I like that they included tea. Personally, I kind of wish it would have been a little bit more thematic because there's a turmeric tea and then there's also a Parisian tea and this book is not set in those times. I, well, not those times, those places. But at the same time, like I do appreciate that we got free tea to try with your teacup. So like that kind of worked for me. So now that this book has finished, um, I won't give away the ending other than I was really pleased with it. We can move on to the third book aka an offer from a gentleman. Now the third book we have here follows Sophie and Benedict. Benedict being the second oldest of the Bridgerton siblings. Sophie, well, she is living a Cinderella story, but before the fairy godmother has come across her. So she is the daughter of an earl, but like an unofficial bastard daughter. So she was raised because of her bloodline in relative luxury, but she was never allowed the acknowledgement of her birthright. Now, her father ends up getting remarried, and then he dies shortly after her, leaving her with a stepmother and two step-siblings. So, Sophie decides to have one day of an adventure, and she gets dressed up for a masquerade ball at the Bridgertons, and she meets Benedict, and they have a wonderful, gorgeous connection, but then reality happens and she has to leave. Several years later, she is on her own for the very first time and she ends up running into Benedict. And he does not recognize her, but she recognizes him. 
So the two of them get uh, one of those situations where like, you know, like they're forced to stay together. Sophie learns that Benedict is also an artist, but he's also like really nervous when it comes to his art, so he doesn't show it to people. And that's where our very first gift comes in, 152. So 152, Sophie sees a sketchbook that Benedict has, and in it is a couple of drawings. As we open up the magnet clasp of this little sketchbook, we see the first drawing, which is the Bridgerton family playing croquet, which is actually something that happened in the first book, and it's kind of carried through. The siblings get very competitive, and it's like kind of like a reoccurring thing of that they do together. The second sketch is of Sophie on the masquerade ball with her gorgeous mask and her wonderful costume. And it's the first indication to Sophie that even though he might not recognize her, Benedict remembers her and he hasn't forgotten. Thoughts on this sketchbook? Like, whew, okay, so like I, it's either leather or pleather. I really don't know enough to tell, but I quite like it. I like that this is a binder clip, so if you have that six hole punch paper, you can always just refresh it. Oh, I really like this item. It feels fancy, like super fancy. <laughs> okay, so as the book develops, Sophie is hiding her status as a bastard daughter and instead is pretending to be a servant and gets a job at the Bridgerton household, which means that she's going to see Benedict more often. And Benedict is kind of struggling with the fact that he really likes Sophie, but she won't be with him because of their status differences. So then we come upon the item from page 258. And we have one of Julia Quinn, the author's like famous, like, oh, you can totally tell that they love each other, but they're just like arguing, like that, that little cutesy arguing stuff. And during that, one of the things Sophie is saying is like, I'm trying to read a book. Oh. My. Gosh. Okay, so like this book box was, pro we were promised from this book box, the first three books of the Bridgerton series. And in comes book four. Now this is The Romancing Mr. Bridgerton by Julia Quinn. It takes a lot to surprise me from a book box and this has successfully done it. So this story, I have read it and we focus on, um, Penelope Featherington, who has been a side character in the other books, and Colin as well. As we continue with the offer from the gentleman, we get to see more um, sneaky plans by the stepmother and her being evil and trying to catch Sophie. And I would say this book does a really good job on the tension. Well, I appreciated that. And now on page 344 comes the last item. And that is during one of their fights. It's like one of those big dramatic, you know, like the kind that are in the romances and they're big and they're dramatic. And during that, she is wearing a specific scarf. And that's what we have when we open it. It is like this, um, I would say like a pale rose with some botanical-ish prints on it. I think it looks lovely and it kind of matches the aesthetic of the rest of the items in here as well. So thoughts on the book, um, the book so far, I guess. I really liked The Duke and I. I think The Fist Count That Left Me is a close second. Personally, An Offer from a Gentleman, the third book in this series, doesn't tickle me in the same way. I just, I don't know, like maybe it's just me, but I feel like Benedict is too angry of a main character to really make it enjoyable, but I still like liked the story, if that makes sense. Romancing Mr. Bridgerton has one of my favorite female heroines, and that's Penelope, though I feel like Colin was a bit of an arse throughout all of them. That being said, like the first four books on a whole from the Bridgerton series, I would say definitely worth it. I really enjoyed it. And I also really enjoyed this book box. I feel like they took a lot of time and they picked out the items that fit really well. And definitely my favorite has to be the surprise fourth special edition book. But that being said, the sketchbook, the gloves, and the pen are also like really, really nice. And the flowers, I think they'll fit well with the store. I do think that the key and probably the tea, um, well, the tea set I think are is great, and I think the concept of including tea with it is great as well. 
though I'm not entirely convinced that like, the teas chosen matched the books quite well. The key, I think, works well with this story, and the ring, even though it's small, it's still rather pretty. So on a whole, I would rate this one 9.5 out of 10. I really enjoyed the book box. Thank you so much for joining me today, and I'm wishing you the absolute best.